Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna do an example of finding the volume bound between two paraboloids. Here we have z equals x squared plus y squared and z equals two minus x squared minus y squared. So let's look at the visual representation here. What you'll notice here, it's important to point out is that the z equals two minus x squared minus y squared is the, is the paraboloid on top. And then we have z equals x squared plus y squared is the parabola on bottom. That will be important for when we're doing this calculation so we don't get a negative value out for the volume. But what we need to do to make this calculation is to find the region over which we want to integrate and have that projected, that region on the xy plane there. Um, we can find that by setting these equal to each other. But before we go about doing that, I just want to remind us that what we're going to do, as I had said, is we're going to calculate the double integral over the region on the xy plane of the functions where we have f of xy, which will be the upper function, minus g of xy, and then dy or da, actually, not with d, I could say dx dy or dy dx, but actually, I'm going to do this in polar. So I'm just going to say da right there for that generally. So I've already let the cat out of the bag a little bit. We're going to do this in polar. That probably would be obvious. As you can see, this trace where these two functions intersect is this circle that projects down on the xy plane. But if we wanted to find that algebraically, all we need to do is set these two equal to each other. So x squared plus y squared equals 2 minus x squared minus y squared. Just going to add over these terms. What I'll get is 2x squared plus 2y squared equals 2. And divide everything by 2. What I get is x squared plus y squared equals 1. And so this is simply confirmation that there the area, the region of integration in the xy plane um, for calculating the volume between these two functions right here is a circle of radius 1 which means then I can define my r, and I'm going to define this in terms of the polar coordinates, again, because it's a circle, and it makes my life a heck of a lot easier. And so for r, my r value is going to range from 0 to 1. That will fill in that region as far as that distance from the origin there. And then I want to create the full circle, so I'm just going to go from 0 to 2 pi. I also want to do the work of translating both of these functions into uh, polar coordinates here, which is a really easy with a setup here. So r or z equals x squared plus y squared. Uh, when I put that into polar, I know x squared plus y squared is r squared. So this is simply the function r squared. And this function right here, again, I'll just, I used this trick previously, but I'll just write this as minus x squared plus y squared. And so this function right here is going to be 2 minus r squared. And it's important to point out, and we had the visual representation, but I could always plug some values in to validate this. But this bottom function right here, or the function that I have on the bottom, is the top. So this is the upper function in that image we had a second ago. And this is the bottom. And again, this isn't the most important thing. It would actually work out. You would just get the opposite of what you should get. And you should know that volume is always positive. Um, but what I need to do is now take this minus this in my formula right here. We have our region described. We know that our dA in these polar coordinates, co coordinates is r dr d theta. And so we actually have everything that we need. So let's get it set up right now. So I have my region. So my r values go from 0 to 1, theta from 0 to 2 pi. And I have my upper function, which is 2 minus r squared. And I'm going to subtract away this lower function of r squared. And uh, that is times r dr d theta. I think it's really important to point out right now is that we make sure that we put this stuff inside parentheses or brackets, the function inside this double integral for polar coordinates. We sometimes are lazy and don't do it previously, but especially since we're multiplying by this r, it's important to remind us about that distribution that is necessary. Um, but let's clean this up. I'm going to just save a little bit of space right here. So first, I'm just going to clean up this inside this parentheses. It would be 2 minus 2r squared. I could pull out that factor of 2 but I don't think it's going to make my life much easier. Um, so here we go. So 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 1 for my r values. 
I'm going to distribute that r through here. So I'm going to get 2r minus 2r cubed. And uh, that's in terms of r first and then theta second. So we can just keep on rocking in the free world. 0 to 2 pi. Let's take the integral here. This will be uh, r squared. And this would be 2 fourths r to the fourth or 1 half r to the fourth. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1 d theta. And then when I do this, I'm just plugging a 1 right here. So this is actually really easy. Um, so I also want to write this real fast to make sure we know that this is 1 half right here. So this is going to be 1, r squared is 1, 1 minus 1 half. And so what we're going to get here is from 0 to 2 pi uh, of just 1 half, no theta at all, d theta. And so if we finish this calculation, what we're going to get is 1 half theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. The 0 does nothing. When we put a 2 pi in here, we're going to end up just with pi is the volume bound between these two paraboloids. If you felt comfortable in the first conversations with double integrals and polar coordinates, there's nothing really too tricky here. The steps are, first of all, you need to define your region here. Your region, in this case, was the intersection between these two is this circle of radius 1. That made it really easy to write this region in the polar coordinates. Again, it would have been a lot more work if we had to do that in rectangular. Um, you then need to identify the top and the bottom function. Once you've identified the top and the bottom function, you put those in the correct order. Again, always liking, important to emphasize this. It's the one thing you always just see missed. That factor of r, then dr and d theta. Make sure you're distributing that through. And then after that, if you've done things right, if you're given a, a nice enough problem, it's actually really easy working with polar coordinates and double integrals.